Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tori, and I'll be getting us started with some logistics. Um, the first thing is we will be recording this webinar. Um, second, you will see you're muted throughout the presentation. And third, if you have questions during this webinar, please use the Q&A function in Zoom. You can submit them, any questions during the presentation, and I will moderate these questions at the end of the event. Please join me in welcoming our three presenters today. We have Adade, Jen, and Robin. Robin will start us off with a brief update about Habitat. Jen will review some changes and adaptations we have made to assist home buyers, and Adade will talk about the differences in home showings and some of our properties that are currently available on the MLS. Thank you, and I will pass it off to Robin. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we are holding this webinar to update you, our realtor network on what Habitat Twin Cities response has been to coronavirus uh, and the effects on our community, um, as well as to share how we're responding and how you can expect to work with us. I'm the Chief Strategy Officer for Twin Cities Habitat for Humanity, which means um, I work a lot with um, all of our staff, HR, our lending and mortgage company, and of course my team's really focused on how we keep Habitat open for business. Before the crisis hit, I uh, just wanted to share that thanks to you and your partnership, we're really having one of our best years ever. In the first nine months of our fiscal year, which really starts July 1st until June 30th, we were already in the process of working with 200 families to create and preserve home ownership. Uh, many more families than that, we were working with financial coaching. And that meant that so far to date, we had helped 89 families become homeowners for the first time. A lot of the success is due to you, our partners, and the growing popularity of our open market program, uh, home buying option, which many of you are participating with. Each month we work with dozens of families through that program. Um, as many of you know, because you're part of the realtor network, um, home buyers can work with you, their realtor of their choice. They find a home that they love, and then they use our habitat mortgage, our affordability assistance, and our home buying education process to make the home accessible and affordable. I'm sure many of you are experiencing with your own companies and your personal lives, uh, everything is changing day by day with this virus. Wanted to share with you that we have been following Governor Walz's leadership by responding to the crisis in phases and really adapting our business model based on the best known information. Um, one thing is Habitat is considered an essential service because we are an affordable housing organization and a mortgage lender. Uh, we are open for business. We are open remotely and we have been serving our clients this entire time. Um, our financial coaches are working with clients and meeting with them remotely. Our lending staff is able to work with your clients remotely. So we're very pleased that we've been up for business this entire time. Uh, we also continue to build Habitat homes. We have a lot of good safety protocols in place for that. Many of you may uh, volunteer with Habitat um, with your realtor teams or through your other businesses. Right now, we are not having volunteers on site just to keep things very safe, but we will let you know more in the summer uh, when we are back open and bringing volunteer teams back on site. In the meantime, as I said before, we're working closely with all of our home buyers who are going through the process, but just as importantly, we're also working very closely with the thousands of homeowners who already have a Habitat mortgage. We're working very hard to keep them in their homes. And one of the benefits of the Habitat mortgage is that we don't just care about getting someone into home ownership, we really care about sustaining them in home ownership. So we're really pleased to have um, so many partnerships that really help us support families, not uh, through the whole 30 years or more of their mortgage. We can answer any questions you might have about what we're doing with current Habitat homeowners at the end of this webinar. Uh, just a quick note to protect the safety of our staff and our clients, we have closed our office, our main office on 1954 University Avenue, um, and we're all working remotely. Jen is gonna talk a little bit about the specific changes we're making uh, to be responsive to COVID, um, but just for the foreseeable, for uh, foreseeable future, we anticipate that we will keep the office closed, but of course we will let you know 
when we're um, considering opening back up to the public. With that, I'll hand it over to Jen, who's going to give you an update on what we're doing to adapt uh, our mortgage lending uh, to working with your clients. Jen? Thanks, Robin. Good afternoon, everybody. And let me just take a second to say thank you for taking some time today to um, partner with us and see kind of our response to this and how we're continuing on with our, our mission to uh, just get as many first-time home buyers in the state of Minnesota into an affordable mortgage as we can. That always starts with our realtor network and our, our network of folks that um, continue to partner with us to uh, do great things for owners here in the state of Minnesota. So we'll talk a little bit about the changes, you know, most of the changes that we've made um, uh, around the current health crisis, um, we want you to understand, first of all, that we know that things have changed right now with your home buyers. We understand that client circumstances not only have changed, but are continuing to change. This is a fluid process that we're, as we go, making changes and accommodations according to what we can make for allowances to our home buyers. Um, we're here and ready to support them in any way that we can. And, and by that, we mean we have a lot of home buyers right now that maybe are um, having to go back to our financial coaching department because some of the pieces that they need to be mortgage ready, their current pre-approval maybe no longer is valid because they've had some bumps in the road with COVID. And we're working to keep in touch with them and just keep them in our loop so that when their circumstances they will inevitably change and, and bring us back to normal. We'll be able to be there for them to support them to very quickly get them back on track for homeownership. Um, having said that, we also have, thankfully, a lot of home buyers that are still out there looking. Um, before I move forward, I just want to say for any of you that are on the call today, I would love feedback. I, I really love knowing what's going on in the market. Habitat has this wonderful homeownership organization, but in a lot of ways, we rely on our realtor connections and our network to tell us what you're seeing as well. So feel free to just kind of pipe into uh, the chat and just tell me what you're seeing. Are you picking up? Are you busy? Um, I've been hearing a lot that the Minnesota first time home buyer is, market is really still clicking along quite um, uh, business as usual in some ways because that particular market seems to be not as affected, but I would love the feedback that you guys have for me as we go here too. Um, we continue to work with our home buyers as we have um, previously, but we're just doing a lot of that remotely now. So we'll talk a little bit about what those changes look like for our home buyers. Um, for us as, as um, uh, people that support our home buyers and looking to uh, get them into homes. So, uh, Tori, will you move that slide for me just real quickly? Let's talk a little bit about, first of all, what we're doing with our home buyers now that we didn't do before. So, probably I've worked in the uh, mortgage industry for 20 years. And I have to say, before I came to home to Habitat, there were a lot of pre approvals that I did over the phone. That is not unusual in this industry. It's just with Habitat, for several different reasons, we always chose to do our pre approval meetings. Everything that we do with our client has always been client facing, um, sitting across the table from them, getting to know their families and, and really having them feel like there's an open door policy with our office. Um, and because of that, we just have a lot of more uh, meetings with our home buyers uh, face to face. We've had to switch that up a little bit and, and behave a little bit more like a lot of um, our other lending colleagues do and we're making and uh, changes and adapting to that. One of the first things we know is our home buyers don't often have um, access to be able to scan documents, to make quick copies, things like that. Uh, so we've dropped uh, a Dropbox at Habitat. So they still don't need to worry about um, electronics kind of getting in the way of submitting their, their items to us to get ready to purchase a home. So we've got a Dropbox at Habitat that gets checked. Those items get scanned directly to um, whomever uh, the intended user was, whether it be myself, a daddy, or other team members. And so we really still have a way for our home buyers to get us something outside of just the electronic realm. Um, our pre-approval and our loan application meetings are all done virtually now. Again, that's a change for us, but not necessarily a change industry-wide. And we've really learned to adapt to talking with our home buyers over the phone, having meetings uh, much like this where we can see our home buyers. Um, probably for us, one of the biggest challenges is um, we've just been used to it, but our home buyers seem to adapt really well to have those virtual meetings um, online. 
So when we sit down and meet with them for pre-approval or a loan application, we're going to be meeting with those clients virtually for right now. Um, and we continue to take on new clients. Nothing about that process has changed. So our clients always came to us online. You'll see a link here later in the presentation and then I will follow up with an email link for that as well for those of you that don't have it handy. But our home buyers have always gone right online and, and filled out their um, application for our program online. So nothing about taking on those new clients has changed. I think we maybe had about a two week time period where that was halted when all of this first started but we continue to see people come online. We encourage people to learn that way and to fill out their um, applications online for our Habitat program. Um, as many of you know, many of you maybe don't, we do offer, Adare and myself, um, offer some uh, education pieces for agents in regards to our program and how they get people to us and what our process looks like. You'll see an invite after um, this presentation as well for the next one of those. If you I haven't been a part of that, I suggest you kind of hop on board so that you understand um, the way we work a little bit differently and how we customize things a little bit more for our home buyers. but a lot of that process starts online. So nothing there has changed. Um, we have always required mortgage education and eight hours of continued education for our home buyers. So it was made up of several different things. One of the things that I always boasted to everybody about is that we have two hours of home buyer education that my counterpart Maureen here at Habitat, another loan officer here, uh, puts on. She does an all day class teaming up with Adate and some of the other folks in our home ownership department. And that's been a really big value for our home buyers. And we wanted to make sure and get that rolling as soon as possible. So we've now got those courses going live uh, here in May for the first time. Uh, we focused on what we feel is the most important classes right now, which is about three hours out of the eight hours. We are having our home buyers come on and um, interact with us in a virtual setting. They're getting the mortgage education class, and then they're also getting the uh, how to work with your real estate agent class. As we know, that one's important. We like to teach them good manners and what is considered to be the norm out there. What do they need to be talking to their real estate agents about and how much are they sharing with us? And, and that class is real important and Dottie does a great job with that. So those continuing uh, courses are online here available uh, in May for our home buyers. Those are courses that are required in order for our home buyers to get their pre-approval. So we got those expedited up and online and interactive so that we, we can have that question and answer and, and still have that same interaction with our home buyers. So that kind of outlines for you a little bit of the changes that we're doing virtually to still continue to try and stay connected. As I mentioned earlier, I love feedback from my real estate agents. So if there's tips or tools or things that you guys are doing out there when working a little bit more virtually as well, lay them on me. I'd love to hear suggestions. Um, you'll see I've got a link here um, on this next page that really talks about um, where you can go with that buy with Habitat uh, in order to send your first time home buyers in our direction. I always tell everybody, make sure and let me know if you're having problems with the link, if you're having problems with that intake process, just loop me in and I always just pull in our intake team and point you in the right direction. We're gonna talk a little bit about our underwriting changes um, that have affected our home buyers. Thankfully, uh, I feel very lucky to work for the organization that I do. We're an affordable lender. Uh, and one of the biggest things that I see working for an affordable lender is that every conversation we have is about our home buyers and how we can um, continue to make their dreams of home ownership come true. A lot of our changes um, that we've seen here with COVID are in favor of the home buyers. We're loosening up on some of the things where I know some of our other lender partners are having to tighten up some of their standards. We've been able to give a little bit more leeway on some of our items. We'll talk about them a little bit here. 30 day gaps of employment are now accepted. Um, uh, through uh, our mortgage program. That used to be something that there was a 30 day gap of employment. Um, many of our home buyers have things that come up outside of, of course, um, maternity leave or medical leave. That was something that would have put a stop on their home buying process. Um, we also really were looking for stability with our clients and we do have a zero down program. So we made sure that they had enough savings. Our savings requirement had always been $6,300. And let me tell you just real quickly, the reasoning behind that was we want home buyers that um, because they don't, you know, many times put a down payment, we want to make sure they're still financially fit to be great homeowners. As Robin mentioned earlier, it's our job not just to get them in the house, but keep them in. So one of the things that we required was $6,300 in savings. That was 
put in place to cover $3,000 in closing costs because we'll lend her credit anything after that. It also covered their homeowner's insurance and a month's worth of reserved. Well, we've kind of customized that now, understanding that everybody has a different situation. Listen, some of my home buyers are buying townhomes and their insurance premium is $1,000 less than a home buyer that's buying a single family. So we're adjusting that um, asset requirement according to the home buyer and what exactly do they need in reserves. Um, we're also making allowances if they weren't at their position one year. Previously, this is something that we didn't allow through Habitat. If you weren't at your current job for one year, you had to show me, your loan officer, a financial benefit for making that move. Was there, you know, were you getting a raise? Did they have, um, you know, better benefits? That kind of thing. We were looking once again for that stability in our home buyers. We wanted to know that they had been at their place of employment for a year. Obviously, right now, we're going to be making exceptions for that. We have a lot of folks that um, have been in a situation where they've been furloughed or laid off or lost their jobs. And so that requirement from us in order to get mortgage ready is no longer going to be in place if we're COVID related with that. Um, we have a lot of home buyers, as you know, if you know anything about the uh, mortgage process, that, um, that are working remotely just like we are. That makes the challenge of verifying employment and getting a VOE directly from human resources a little bit tougher. So we're making accommodations for our verification of employment process and how we look into that. If we Many times with those verifications of employment, that would be done 48 hours before closing. It still is. We've just switched up how we're going to do that. So that just kind of gives you an idea of what we're looking at for changes as we go here. Um, with our underwriting changes that affect directly our home buyers. A little bit of changes as far as our meetings go. We're adapting to everything that we can to make this just as easy for our home buyers as we had in the past. Um, Adati is going to talk with you a little bit as well about um, the different changes that he has uh, as he works with our Habitat home buyers and he's showing our uh, Habitat built homes. Uh, Again, if any of you aren't familiar, you'll you'll be uh, want to get on to one of Adate and I's sessions that we have upcoming here in June to kind of learn about who Habitat is as a homeownership organization. You'll know why he's got houses he's going to talk to you about next and, and what opportunities there are for you there as agents. Um, Adate, uh, uh, excuse me, Tori, I'll have you move that slide for me. And this is going to be handed off here to Adate, my real estate partner here at Habitat. Adate, works with our home ownership side of, uh, home building side, excuse me, of Habitat, and is a licensed realtor himself. If you've been uh, to any of our online um, webinars, you will recognize Adade's voice in his face. Now you can put a, a face with that name. Adade is a rel uh, our resident real estate agent that gives us uh, lots of great tips, and he can speak a little bit more of what we are anticipating for our home showings and how we've changed uh, with the COVID crisis to accommodate that. So. That said, Adare, I will hand it off to you. Thank you so much, Jen, and thank you very much, uh, Robin, uh, for uh, taking this time to be with us, uh, talk to uh, our realtors today. Um, here at Habitat, um, safety is our top priority. And uh, like Jen said, once your client apply for this program, this is not a mortgage application. It is to apply for the home buying program. Once your client is mortgage ready, then the client can decide where to buy, either buy a Habitat built home. This is what I'm gonna talk about. This is the protocol for new home and existing properties showing, or use you as a realtor to purchase on open market. That's where you as a realtor, you come in. Or the client can choose to buy anywhere with you know, any other lender. Now, safety is very important. And we are following the protocol from um, the National Association of Realtors, Minneapolis Area Association of Realtors, and St. Paul Association, Area Association of Realtors to make sure that, yes, our client safety is very, very at the top. Now, a few things that we have uh, implemented um, uh, with, you know, to deal with this crisis. Um, what happened is now, client can choose to view properties online with a virtual tour. We can do a virtual showing. And we are working on another one to do 
virtual open houses. As you realtor, you are aware, our board just launched last week, we had the communication about a virtual open houses where the agent has to be there and stream live so that we can get you know, feedback. That will be implemented very soon. Those are for habitat develop and habitat build homes. We, we will have also an in-person showing. And for that, you wanna limit the participant to a minimum number, three people at the most. Yes, I know that this time can be difficult for folks who don't have daycare, kids are out of school, everybody's staying home. Yes, we can accommodate. I speak to my client, I talk to them, let them know that this is what the situation is. And this is how we can accommodate because we are family driven. And I do have kids myself. And now it's like, whatever you wanna go, there's no babysitter, you have to take them along. So we work with families who have kids and accommodate and see how we can show those, property, those properties to them. Um, yes, we, do, we don't have an official open house like the one that we had, but now we can do a virtual open house. Now. Since the board just approved this um, um, last week, uh, the National Association of Realtors, and we will be able to have these um, virtual open houses where I will be there, I'll be streaming live, and I'll be answering questions. And um, one thing that is very important that I want to throw out there also is that we do have new properties and those new properties, there are crews on the uh, construction side and showing will happen after the crew is gone from the construction site. And what I do is contact directly the site supervisor and talk to them. Make sure that we have a slot of time that where there will be nobody on the site and all the materials are sanitized so that our clients are safe and they are safe as well. We also um, want our client to protect themselves. We want them to come in with their own masks and their own gloves and make sure that we, we stay, we have that safe distance between us when we chat. Most of the time, um, I don't get to go in the house uh, with the client, just let the client visit the house, stay outside, make sure that we have any question answered. As all you know, sellers don't want us to touch their, uh, uh, the light switch anymore. They want them to, to be on. And if somebody is sick, they want to be to stay home. Same protocol will apply here at Habitat. But I want to share with you as a realtor that Habitat has a few homes now on MLS that you can definitely bring your client in to us. The only thing that you, you need to consider in this one is your client has to be in that area median income eligibility uh, guideline. It has to meet that area median income eligibility. We are serving at Habitat, we serve less than 80% of the area median income. So meaning that your client has to make exactly up to the 80% of the area median income to afford these homes or to buy these homes from us. Um, I have the list, reach out to me directly or Jen, we'll share this list, list with you, or you can go to home.tchabitat.org and you'll have access to all our properties that we have built from ground up or we have rehab or we bought on, um, we call them a bucket three, a gentle uh, rehab, probably just need to replace the carpet and um, make those available for a client. But your client can purchase these homes if um, you have, um, if they have an interest. Uh, the picture that I'm, that I'm showing now, the townhomes are in Hugo. Uh, the, um, uh, the one next to the townhome is in Burnsville. 
the other one is in Bedness Heights, and the one at the bottom is in Bloomington. So let us know if you have any client that might qualify for this program and send that client our way. I'll be more than happy to help them. So if you have any question, we'll move on to Q&A. If you have any question, let us know. Um, we are here. A uh, question to me, to Chan, or to our CEO, Robin. Thank you. Thanks, Adade. Um, we'd like to open it up for questions here. Hopefully we've answered some of yours already, but we can for sure do a few more. Please use the question and answer function in Zoom. We'll get to as many as we can. Um, but if we don't answer your question specifically, we can follow up you directly afterwards. Um, the first question we have, um, Jenna, I think this is for you. Are there any changes to your time frames for closing or are you still doing a 45 day window? And I will unmute you here. Go ahead. I should wait until I'm unmuted to talk then, I suppose. Um, I just was launching right in there, Tori. First, I just want to say before I answer that question, um, I want to skip back just a second to those houses that Adade just showed y'all. Just to kind of clarify, um, many times Habitat will take a home and do some gentle rehab and flip that house or when we build a new property. Um, all of those houses are generally slatted for our Habitat home buyers. We're really, we, we're constantly picking up inventory so that we can offer them back to our Habitat home buyers. We're not in the business of just picking up real estate and going out there and, and selling it. And what generally ends up happening is for one reason or another, this wasn't a fit for our Habitat families. We didn't have anybody that had current pre-approval um, through our systems that were interested in purchasing these homes, whether it be location, anything like that. So that's why you're seeing these homes. This doesn't happen a whole lot. Um, and when Adade mentioned, they still need to fit into our program. That means we are only, as an affordable um, housing organization, we are only allowed to sell our properties to folks that fit into some of that criteria. The biggest magic um, thing there is really, are they first time home buyers? Let's start there. Our income guidelines that Adade discussed do follow along the same guidelines as MHFA. So for any of you agents out there that have used that MHFA, you have probably uh, worked with first time home buyers that are gonna fit into our habitat um, niche. The biggest thing is again, have they lived in the seven county metro area for one year and are they a first time home buyer? If they are, I suggest you really, if you've got clients look into these properties, they don't last long. Uh, they're usually really, really priced well and are really solid homes that have been um, kept up by our home building team and replaced a lot of those vital um, mechanics that are important for first time home buyers. So just wanted to make some clarification on that. Um, back to Tori's questions, yes, we are still at 45 days. We have found that that number is still working quite well for us. Our turn times on appraisals are still um, getting us there the way that we need to and, and working virtually again has added maybe a few more steps versus folks just dropping things off, but 45 days from time of written offer is still very feasible for us. Great, thanks, Jen. Um, I have another question here. How can realtors access um, homes that you are gonna put on the MLS before they go on the MLS? A good question. So that is kind of one of the things that we hold back for our realtor network. So. If any of you are involved in our realtor network and all it takes to do that is really take an hour out of your day and get educated with Adade and I on how our program works. Our next uh, um, uh, realtor meeting is here in June. Um, you'll be sent a link afterwards to sign up. Nine times out of 10, we are going to send these listings to our agents first. This time around, that didn't happen. With COVID and everything that, go, that went on, unfortunately, if you're listening and you're a part of that realtor network, that did not happen um, this time around with these particular properties, but you will usually be sent those once you've kind of um, stepped through that hour with the dot A and I and learned a little bit more about our program. One of the benefits uh, uh, to that program is getting kind of first dibs at those houses. In addition to, we send you newsletters that I tell everybody, they're informative. We're not looking to sell you anything. We're looking just to keep you up to speed on what we're seeing in affordable housing and how we can help with Thanks, Jen. Um, here's another question for you. Um, what happens if a 
home buyer loses their job midway through the process? It's a good question too, because we are seeing a little bit of that here and there. A lot of, uh, right now, I think we've seen some of the deaths settle. A lot of the folks that were going to be laid off or going to run into employment issues, we already know about those folks, but of course, that's still happening. We still have some people that um, were in the middle of, of the process and they become self-employed. At that point, we are um, pretty much in the same boat as everybody else, which is unfortunately, if you are not employed um, midway through the process and you've lost your job, we would handle it uh, like the loss at any other time. The COVID isn't necessarily, unfortunately, going to um, change the fact that we need you to have stable income and employment when we close on your home. Uh, the accommodations that we've made for that are ones that we talked about earlier, which are that um, as soon as you are back at that position or another position, we aren't going to require lengthy explanations as to why you were out of work and why you didn't have that year under your belt. Thanks, Jen. And so we just have one more question for you today. Um, have you seen a reduction in people applying for the program or making offers on homes? Um, I'm going to actually spring this one over to my friend Adade because he is my resident realtor. I know you know a lot about that intake process as well, Adade. Um, maybe this is something you want to touch on a little bit. What are you seeing out there? I mean, for, for me personally, I certainly saw a slowdown like everybody else initially, and we're starting to see a little bit more momentum gathering now. Um, we certainly uh, are seeing more people coming and applying for the program in general. But Adade, what do you feel like you're seeing for um, volume for offers that are being made. Um, you're a little bit more in the loop on that. We just listed some of those houses um, through Habitat. Um, what's the buzz? Yes, you know, pe people are still buying. People are buying. And um, I think uh, the, um, um, the inventory is still low. Uh, that's, um, it's no brainer. You know, everybody knows that. And all realtors are familiar with uh, uh, the inventory being low. However, uh, first time home buyers are still buying a lot. Many, many multiple offers are still coming back. Um, the market is, um, is still good uh, for folks who are buying. Um, it's just that um, uh, it's the same thing that we've been struggling with since I would say two, three years, uh, not having enough houses for people who wants to buy. Well, thank you, Jen, Adade, and Robin for filling us in on Habitat's response during this COVID time. Thank you to all attendees, and we hope you have a wonderful rest of your Monday. Thanks, guys. Thank you.